I wanted to show a concept I've been working on of using on change to trigger specific events rather than on edit. Now this is a very introductory foundational video, so we aren't going to be working on a specific project. This is laying some groundwork for some future work we may be able to do. So let me first show the issue, which I know we've run into a couple of times in some of the comments here on, on the channel. I have this on edit trigger set up. And right now, just to show what's going on, all I've set it to do is get the row underneath the row where the edit is made and place the value of the edit there. So offset from where the, rain, the edit occurred, one row, zero columns, set the value as E value. So if I come here, I've set up this formula pretty basic, just taking these inputs and giving some output based on it. So let's change these first. I'm going to go 50, 19, 44. Okay. So the on edit worked every time I made an edit on each of these three cells, it put the same value right below it, right? However, we can see that it did not activate when the output in column F was changing. Because as we've talked about before, on edit only triggers when a user edits a value. Two more quick examples. First, I actually need to disable the on edit while I set this up. Let's do five rows. Okay, that's just gonna spit out five random numbers. And let's go ahead and enable that again. And this is gonna be going to the column over here rather than the row. So if I do hello world, okay, hello world showed up here, no numbers showed up here, <clears throat> right? Because that was a formula that made the change rather than a direct user input. Likewise, import range comes up frequently. You have um, different data from different sheets being pulled into a central location or any other location. Here I have this import range set up to get A2 of this sheet, right? Here's the sheet ID, here's the sheet ID. So if I go ahead and change the 100 to 70, then over here it comes to 70, but nothing changes here, right? The on edit did not trigger because a user did not change a value on this sheet. Now. I want to show the workaround using on change. I'm going to call it on change for just for ease of access. However, I do want to recognize that on change is not a simple trigger. It is an installable trigger. Let's go look at what that means. Google app script on change objects, event objects. And this is why on change can be tricky to use because on edit has as objects, the values and the range. However, looking at the on change, all we have is the user who made the edit, the, the change of whatever sort, what the trigger ID was, the change type, and the authorization mode. That's it. We don't have a source. We don't have a range. We don't have a value. So in order to use on change takes some groundwork to get there. Because while on the on edit, I can do E dot range dot offset in on change. I cannot do E dot range dot offset. I mean, I can write it, but it won't do anything because that E parameter, that E value doesn't contain a range um, value within it, okay? But what we can use is the property service to store and retrieve values from specific locations. If you haven't yet watched my video on the property service, go do that. I'm not gonna be going over what, like the, the introduction from there, we're just gonna be using it. So I first want to just prove that I don't have that I don't have anything in the property service right now. So let's do 
property service dot get script properties dot get properties and this gets it says a copy of all key value pairs so i don't need to loop through all of them it's just going to give it to us so let's log that and we're just going to run the properties stuff all right it's empty okay so now i actually want to make a property and let me get rid of my edit one all i'm caring about for this sample is the imported price we're going to be using this sheet to set the price and this sheet to retrieve the price so i'm going to delete the rest of this we can go ahead and leave this formula we may use that later all right so i am now going to set the properties this is essential to get this this all started so the first thing we need to do is set property. Now there's two clear ways to do this. I can either do this by giving it a name or by just calling the range name. So I can either say, I can either set the, the key as price or A2. For right now I'm gonna do A2. I think that can be a little more clear. Also because it can be easier for the script to retrieve it. And I'm going to set it as get active sheet, get active sheet, get range a2 dot get value. Okay, and then let's actually do this in a separate function. get property a2 okay so first I'm going to set from property stuff and now I'm going to retrieve just to prove it's there oh need to log it so that we can actually see it there we go all right so the property a2 contains 70 as it should great now that we have our property set up let's go ahead and set up our on change trigger to do what we needed to do first i just want to log what kind of change it was so if we come back here change has change type so we can look at the different types of changes and what they're going to do now like i said this is an installable trigger so let's go to triggers add trigger Yep, I want the on change one. And the only thing I need to change here is making it an on change event. Perfect. That may ask you for permissions. Go ahead and authorize those. All right. Now, I just want to look at different types of events, what triggers them. Because as we see here, there's several. There's edits, there's insert rows, insert columns, remove rows, remove columns, insert grid, remove grid, format, or other. All of these are the different types of changes that will trigger an on change event. And we want to look at what those ones are. So let's go ahead and, hello world, and go check our logs. All right, so I made a direct edit. It gave me an edit. Let's add a sheet. That ran insert grid. So insert grid is what we get when we insert grid here is what we get when we add a sheet. So if we delete a sheet. should run again and give us remove grid. Sometimes it takes a moment to give us the logs. There we go, remove grid, perfect. Now, up here we have this import range. Let's make that 80. 
that's 80. And we now have an other change type. And that is what we're going to utilize. So whenever an, a change to a value is caused by a formula, we get an other change type. Great. Now we can use that. So we're going to start this with if e.change type equals other, or as I always like to do it, is not equal to other return. Okay, so we can just check and see, did a formula cause this change? If so, we're going to carry on. If not, go ahead and quit out. Now, I'm going to access the property we set up here. And I actually want to do this in a loop to make this easier in the future. So, let props equals, and I'm just going to copy paste because it's easier. Don't get properties. I want all of them. Because, let's do, let I in props. Actually, let's go ahead and lay, lay name this p let p in props p and log props p all right and let's actually keep our change type log up here as well just so we can keep better track of what's going on. All right, so let's change this to 90. This changes to 90. Go to our executions. Perfect, so this is why this is so great. I have the other, because that was the change type. Then it's giving me A2 as the name of the key and 70. So that A2 is coming from logging P itself. So let P in props, the P itself is the name of the, the property that we set. And that's going to be super useful because now we can actually call P as part of this. So let's do let R and val. Okay, let's watch what we can do here now. Let r equals p, actually better yet, let's declare our, okay, declare all those normal things we have let r equals ss.getRange p. Okay. And now we can do a comparison. Let val get value. We don't need those lets and actually don't want them. Obviously, we could consolidate this to a single and just do r equals ss.getRange p.getValue. Let's have it broken out here. If val not equal to props p, But actually, we do want the R because it'll help us in this case. R dot offset. Need the whole thing there. Uh, over here, let's do one row down, no columns. Let's set it equal to the stored value. So basically what I'm going to be creating here is kind of a, a history of change prices. 
And then, and this is crucial, we need to do this again. So, every time there is an other change, which is, as we saw, the result of a formula changing a value, then it's going to loop through all the properties. It's going to get the range based on the name and the value of that range. And if the value here is not equal to whatever is stored in the properties service with the same key as that range, then we're going to drop one row down and set that value equal to whatever is in the property service and then change whatever's in that property service. That's what we're doing. Let's give it a try. So let's check, set this to 95. Over here we get 95 and look at that. It drops 70 right there. Now, let's just go check whatever's in it. Property service, property stuff. Forgot which one. 95 is currently in the property service. Okay, let's do it again. 100. And it's going to put 95 here. Since I didn't do anything to keep it dropping down, it's just filling it there, which all we're doing is proving it works. And now let's do retrieve props again. And it has 100 there, right? So every time that this changes, it puts whatever was there here and then puts whatever is here now into the properties service. So we can use this in the same way we've used all of our other on edit scripts. We can use this to send emails, to move rows to different locations, to move rows back and forth, to set alerts, to change colors, to do whatever. We can still do that through an on change. It just takes a bit more work because we need to use the property service to store the values as they are changed. We need to make sure the change type is correct and we need to compare the current value versus the stored value. Also very important, you do need to set it once, um, otherwise it will fail when it tries to get it here. There won't be anything for it to get. As always, thank you so much for watching. We are going to be building on this concept in the future, but I really wanted to lay the groundwork of how to use on change to access and move and work with values on the sheet as they are changed by formula. Go ahead and connect with me in the comments here on LinkedIn, Twitter, email me, however you want to get a hold of me if there's any questions, uh, any projects, any needs, any questions, any concerns, and just remember those few things. You need to use the property service for this to work. You need to set up the property service initially and on change, uh, well, on edit only runs when a user edits a value. So that's why we're trying to use the on change here to make that work instead.